the multi-miner version that's out there is pretty old and it still needs an update i started working on some of it but it's like there's a bunch of priority things that i do so like right now the multi-miner is low on a priority list just because it's not there's behavioral things that that i like to enforce if i know personally if it's a good time to mine based on this like if, if crypto was a hundred like if eth was a hundred dollars more than it is it would be profitable for a lot of people um or at least a little bit of profitability so if i go in and spend a lot of time updating the multi-miner when crypto is financially not even remotely sustainable for people to spend power on the network because there is large institutions that had either baked in fixed cost or they have enough runway to keep running they're going to keep the difficulty up so high that no matter what you do as a local you know miner you can't compete at that level until that difficulty comes down so i'm holding off essentially releasing any multi-miner updates as a whole package until either it lifts a little or the difficulty comes down to where it makes sense for a normal consumer because otherwise i'm just i'm promoting a um an activity that you can make a choice that you want to do but it's not probably like i can do other things with the time right now to help people get educated in the space in general and then when mining starts to be make more sense for people to turn on their rigs like like our farm right now is turned off i have a handful of rigs on right now mainly because if i don't have rigs on in the house my wife will just turn on a space heater which uses roughly about 800 watts per for it anyway so i'm like i can i can turn a rig on where i'm at least getting some crypto at a negative return or i can just turn on a device that's just sitting there burning it's not that that it doesn't make sense to mine and that's where the gap is most of the arguments in general in the space are very linear um with mining's dead turn them off it's like well no mining it's just a math problem bro there's there's enough people doing it and the difficulty's high enough to where it doesn't make sense for some people and then you get periods of time where the crypto is worth far more than what the output of what the cells are and what the what the actual inflation rate of people that are mining that are coming in and all fighting over that same inflation rate of this particular currency so i like uh, five thousand coins coming out for raven coin every one minute like the math problem of that inflation rate versus how many people that are getting a portion of that if the price is you know 10 cents per se on Ravencoin in, in a market like now, even with the difficulty, it'd be make a lot of sense for people to mine. Positioning yourself for that, if you're gonna invest X amount of dollars, you can take a strategy that allows you to purchase the cryptocurrency. So you're buying Bitcoin and then you're exchanging it on an exchange. But there's math problem involved with all that because if you buy Bitcoin, you pay a service fee, you, you transfer to an exchange, you pay a service fee because of the transaction state. You make a trade, you're paying a transaction fee. So add up the, all the transactions and see like how much did that cost you in addition? And now how much stacked um, margin was lost you know, so it isn't about buying a particular coin for an X amount. It's about how many of those coins am I not going to get because now I'm paying fees for all the transfers. I don't think we've gotten any update on the squirrel stuff. Like, I don't think they have their miner available. I need to go on the FPGA forums and see. But, I mean, I have, I've been less than enthused with the entire squirrel situation. But it, it's just par for the course for the, for specialized hardware. And it's my one of my biggest, like, it's just a reinforcement of why I don't really the ecosystem based on the model being an incentive based model to participate on networks creates the wrong set of initiatives for specialized hardware is what it comes down to it isn't nothing against any of the specialized hardware companies but when you tie their exact creation to what they're doing with regards to incentivization mechanisms a lot of um, potential for bad stuff can happen and most of the time at least in my experience with specialized hardware it has so in most all instances of asic development fpga bitstream development stuff that was specialized for the stuff it creates just a bad market in general because of what it is you know and that's why i've always been a proponent of the gpu um mining because anybody it doesn't matter like there's miners out there and yes there's specialized miners out there that people optimize but the it's a level playing field when it comes to gpus and it always has been meaning 
even an optimized miner in the best way using every memory hack you can think of has an incremental increase to existing hash rates for a card. Like you're not gonna go out and get a 400 mega hash software miner for your 1080 Ti What for like Ethereum. What ended up happening was is because the, the timings weren't modified on the existing mining architecture, the Ogata company was able to exploit a fact in the way the memory timings work and be able to intercept and then change those timings dynamically and got a decent size increase, not a double, but at least a 35% increase in existing hash rates for like a 1080 Ti, let's say mining Ethereum. So it went from 35 to 50. And then they released that on the highest level cards to the community as a gesture to show, hey, one, this can happen. And two, we have paid clients that, and that paid for this enhancement across the spectrum of all the different cards, but we released it to the 1080s and the 1080 Ti's for people. Um, so the 1060s and 1070s was all closed sourced. But even in that example, which I think would be the extreme example when it comes to GPU mining, it wasn't exponential. It was a, an incremental, a pretty sizably in incremental, but it wasn't like this massive increase. And then if you look at the tr just the other miners, the X16R, you look at the, the new Ubik miner and all that, the difference between like a closed source, closed shop miner, maybe one to two mega hash and maybe a little less power usage, but it's not huge. And so the, the, a normal person that falls into this space, you can participate, right? And there's not this, it's all in the cap cost that everybody's paying near the same versus a situation where you can get a 20X, 30X increase because you've been able to fix the functions onto a chip and then it's going to do that it's going to do that in the most optimized way and then you can do it behind closed doors and then hit the same public network and then cause a discrepancy in, in hash power um if you if we feed into that system and we pay money into that system like the fpgas then what's ended up happening is the producer of that has every I'm not saying they do this I'm not saying the, the gpu hoarder and that the squirrel group did this but they have an opportunity as they're optimizing the bit streams to be available in their closed source miner to take all of that hardware and the force projection of that hardware that was paid for by other people and be able to quote unquote test it and the part of the whole entire issue is that they have every incentive to not just test it on test nets right i mean a typical deployment of hardware and software into that nature would be done on a test network not on production like if steam or a game company came out and wanted to test an mmo before they released it to even alpha they wouldn't try to go do it on live um multiplayer networks you know like oh, we're going to run this release on the same network right it's the same kind of concept as like the behavior and that we've seen this with butterfly labs with avalon with which were the first few asic companies we've seen that avalon was doing fpga stuff too um all of this stuff, all the testing, all the, the the stuff that people paid for was all done at the expense of the network. So if you are a participant waiting for your piece of hardware, the stuff was hitting the network, right? And you were now competing with the hardware that you paid for. <laughs> and then you got it, right? And so that's that's the entire issue with mining in general. Like that's been when it comes to specialized hardware. So the advocacy of ensuring you have a rotation schedule um, from a community of contributors that pivot enough, um, pain essentially into the algorithm or change in the algorithm, which exceeds the fabrication, keeps it kind of, uh, in a way that it doesn't promote people to try to build things for it, uh, or at least it's very painful to, but still at the end of the day, people are still going to build stuff. It doesn't matter. So, I mean, you're just going to it's like water down a, down a mountain. Like the water's still coming down no matter what. No matter how many things you try to block it, it's gonna pivot and change. And I think that's the real kind of, because the ultimate incentive is the fact that it's around fiduciary purposes. So I think that all that in general kind of comes down to a full, uh, full scale that I think as long as the communities try a best effort to pivot it, and then there is other research that's done into the situations with pooled mining in general 
um, like so for nice hash type of things. Why well, nice hash is just trying to provide a service for people to create a counterparty purchase and um, system. You know, there no ill will by their own selves, but just more to say, hey, we're going to facilitate a service that we can put a revenue stream on top of and be able to facilitate revenue for as a company for providing a service that way people can, you know, pool share their hash. <clears throat> creates an adverse effect of, well, now you can use force projection of what's on that network available to attack a coin. So it all comes down to, there's always a balance of good and evil, no matter what it is. And the evil thing being perceived as it's an attack to a network versus not. So it's, it's a matter of figuring out what makes sense to either create a rotating um, function that is a behavior of changing algorithms and, um, trying to de-incentivize that activity or um, it moves on and elevates to something else, uh, which just right now there still isn't an answer to changing, moving away from proof of work. No matter, I mean, there's a lot of development, a lot of brain trust going into proof of stake, distributed proof of stake, but we're seeing issues across the board when it comes to delegation of authority, semi-trustless environments, that kind of stuff. When it comes to the creation of cryptocurrency, we start talking information, it's a whole other different game because information, whatever's writing information to a blockchain ends up having to take some level of trust in that first initial right. So, because it wasn't in, conceived on a blockchain as part of a function, it was existential information added to a blockchain. So you have those kind of discoveries.